Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we had talked about CAT 2022 as an exam and how you can transform your journey from now onward till November into four subcategories or phases. But in this video, we are going to go one step further, talk about the three sections, the syllabus, what are the important topics and how can you actually create a study plan for yourself such that you are able to finish the basics of all the three sections by July end or maximum August end. So I am going to first of all pick up the quant section because majority of the people actually face an issue in this section. In this section, there are four subcategories. First is arithmetic, second algebra, third number system and geometry. I've combined them both. And fourth is modern maths. Arithmetic is a section that carries the most amount of weight in the quant section. Approximately 40 to 50 percent questions since the last many, many years have been from arithmetic. So this is a section that you can definitely not miss. But within arithmetic also, there are certain chapters that occur more often in the exam and also form a building block for DILR and hence you can't skip them. Now, what are those chapters? Before that, let me list the arithmetic syllabus first. Now, I have divided the entire arithmetic syllabus further into four categories. If you look at the first three chapters, which is averages, percentage, ratio and proportion, these are three such chapters which you can definitely not miss. These are the building blocks of arithmetic and they are also extremely important for DILR. After them, you have three chapters which constitute level one application of arithmetic. These chapters also occur frequently in the CAT exam, but out of these three, Two chapters have more weightage which is profit and loss and mixtures and allegations. Then comes time and work and time speed and distance. This is level 2 difficulty or level 2 application of arithmetic concepts. These two chapters are so so important that if you have to make sure that you score well in arithmetic, make sure to work very well on these two chapters. There are repetitive concepts that keep occurring in the CAT exam, especially from time, speed and distance. You will see three or four questions in every single paper. Finally, we have level three application or advanced application based questions in these three chapters. To be honest, out of them only races chapter is important. The rest can still be skipped if you want to. I would personally recommend you to cover the entire syllabus. But if you have to prioritize, the ones that have a star in front of them are the most important. This is arithmetic. If you are beginning your CAD preparation, I would highly recommend to start with arithmetic. It carries the most weight. It is also easier to understand and apply. The second building block is algebra. Now, algebra concepts have variety of chapters under them. Out of them, only two chapters are more important, which is quadratic equations and logarithms and exponents. Now, these chapters keep occurring again and again. For quadratic equations, you can still go through linear equations because it's a base. But if you directly want to jump onto them, that is also possible. Algebra constitutes about 10 to 15 percent of the exam. But the best part about algebra is that they consistently ask the same kinds of questions. So, for example, if you pick up quadratic equation questions from the last many many years you'll see that they keep repeating the type of questions they only change the figures the tricks and the formulas remain the same so it's very easy to crack these questions the third element is number system and geometry now if you are just beginning your preparation or you have begun your preparation already my advice to you like I mentioned in the last video as well would be to leave number system or geometry to a time when you'll have a lot of ample space with you, which means in the month of June or July. If you pick up these two chapters at a time when you also have other commitments, for example, your exams are going on, you won't be able to do them justice because they take a lot of time. They have a lot of sub concepts. Number system and geometry are such chapters which a lot of people actually skip one of them in order to score 95 percentile. So those of you who are probably not targeting the IAMs or the best institutes out there, you just want to score 95 percentile and land at a good decent B school, you can skip either one of these chapters. And a lot of people actually skip geometry because it has many subtopics. But if you have to still go through the major blocks here, my recommendation will be to go through number system and coordinate geometry. The geometry questions have been coming less frequently in the CAT exam since the last few years as compared to coordinate geometry. So if you have to focus 
focus on coordinate geometry and number system. The last building block I have for you is modern maths. Modern math also constitutes 15% of the syllabus and it has a lot of chapters under it. A lot of these chapters will be common with DILR. So the chapters I would highly recommend you to not skip and the ones that occur more frequently are set theory, sequence and series and progressions. Along with that, if you just have to pick one more chapter, I would suggest functions, but this much is also going to be sufficient. Now, this is the entire quant syllabus bifurcated into the important chapters as well as the ones that will also help you for DILR. If you are just starting off, start with arithmetic. Then you take up algebra. Both of them can be finished in a matter of two months. After that, you can pick up coordinate geometry, number system. If you do have time, pick up geometry as well. And finally, modern maths. This is the pattern that you can follow to cover your quant syllabus. We are going to talk about the detailed study plan later. But for now, this is about the quant section. The next section is verbal ability and reading comprehension. I personally prepared very strategically for this section, wherein I realized that 70% of the syllabus is actually RCs. So if it's a difficult RC or an easy RC, the strategy to read it, the strategy to comprehend it and to eliminate the options is absolutely same. So you don't honestly have to tweak your strategy for the different RCs that exist out there. So start with RCs. It takes about three to four months just to eliminate the right options and get comfortable with the reading comprehension passages. So it is highly recommended that you start with RCs. Other than that, there are three simple topics. First is odd one out, second is para summary and finally para jumbles. Now out of these three, para jumbles are still complicated. The other two are fairly easy. So a simple strategy I would share with you is use the other three topics other than the RCs that is odd one out, para summary and para jumbles as fillers. That is when you don't feel like doing a lot for the VRC section, just pick them up solve one or two questions. Your agenda for the month of April and May should be to cover about 20 questions for each of these types just to get familiar with them, just to understand how they are. You don't honestly have to put in a lot of effort on these three right now. But for reading comprehensions, it takes about three to four months to develop the ability to eliminate the right options. And hence, I would recommend that you start off with RCs right now. Every single day, you should solve a certain number of RCs that we're going to discuss in the daily plan but it's important that you focus more on RCs on a daily basis as compared to the other three grammar elements. The next section is DILR. Here I have a very unconventional tip for you. A lot of people recommend that for this section you do the advanced level questions because that is what comes in the exam. But my strategy was to also solve the non-CAT related DILR questions even though I only appeared for the CAT exam. The reason is DILR requires a certain bent of mind, a logical bent of mind that gets developed with practice and it doesn't get developed with practicing harder questions all the time. If you try a variety of logical reasoning questions and data interpretation questions, that's how you develop that ability. So even though the CAT syllabus actually has advanced level DILR, but the advanced level may actually not be a good start for you. A good start can be the non-CAT related logical reasoning questions. These are the questions that you might not have solved during your undergrad, might not have gone through during your school time if you were not an Olympiad taker. But if you have taken them, you can start directly from advanced level. These are the chapters that don't occur in the CAT exam. These topics will never feature in the CAT exam, but they start building your ability to actually understand how logical reasoning works and how to create that mindset to feel that challenge and that vibe to solve the questions. DILR really requires that enthusiasm to treat the question like a puzzle and to actually take it as a challenge to crack it. And for that, you need simpler questions. You don't need advanced level DILR already. So these are the chapters I would recommend you to start off with. But at the same time, if you feel you are already good enough, then you can begin with the rest of the chapters, the ones that I mentioned under advanced DILR and the ones that keep featuring again and again. So this is about the entire syllabus and what are some of the important chapters under each of the sections. Now we are going to discuss a study plan such that that you're able to finish the syllabus by July or maximum by August. The first thing I would recommend is don't pick up the three sections altogether. This is because if you're a working professional, you may not have enough time. And if you are a fresher, then you'll get slightly bored. If you take up all the three sections, it will feel like a burden. Ki har din har karni hi hai. 
Instead, the ideal strategy will be to pick two chapters a day, that is two sections a day. My strategy was that I always picked one section which was my weakest every single day, which was corns. And along with that, I tried to club it with either DILR or VARC. So I followed this pattern, not alternatively, but actually the way I wanted. For example, on some days, if I'm feeling like today I want to do DILR, I would match it with quants and do it. If you follow this pattern for one or two months, you will slowly reach a level when you'll be able to pick up all the three sections together. But if you're just starting off, don't worry a lot about taking all the three sections together. You can also pick up two sections a day and manage to complete the syllabus. The second point is to not spend more than three days on covering any single chapter except geometry and number system. Especially in DILR, there are so many interesting concepts that if let's say I am solving arrangements today, I can solve probably 10 sets, but why would I want to take up arrangements for an entire week just to finish the syllabus? I can understand what arrangements is all about in just a matter of 10 sets. I don't have to complete the entire chapter just for the sake of it. Hence, every single day, try picking up a new chapter for DILR. And for corn, this number can be maximum three days. That is for three days, you can be taking up one chapter, but make sure to switch to the next chapter. That is complete that chapter in the three days. Now, let me talk about the daily plan. In every single day, I used to solve about 30 to 50 quant questions and this used to be my routine for every single day till July or August when I finished my syllabus. This is important to note because in a matter of three days, I used to cover the LOD one, the easy questions of a variety of chapters. There were some chapters that only took me one day to complete. There were some chapters that actually took me a week to complete. My idea was I always set a weekly target. So for example, in the quant section, I would set a target that in one week I am supposed to cover these two or three chapters then it was my wish whether I would want to spend one day to cover all the three chapters or I would want to bifurcate the syllabus into one week and cover 50 questions every single day such that my weekly target gets achieved the reason I set weekly targets was because it helped me stay more flexible I had more autonomy I could easily skip that day and the next day I used to work double to complete the weekly target so that was my quant plan for VARC, I used to read two to three editorials every single morning. And in the evening, I used to practice three to five RCs. Now this number can of course be lower. For example, on some days when I used to feel like not solving so many RCs, I only solved one or two RCs. And along with that, I clubbed those three topics out of grammar picked any one, solved two, three questions, then picked another one, solved two, three questions and then moved. So you can mix and match both RCs along with grammar to cover your VA syllabus. For DILR, the simple strategy I had was to keep solving sets of a particular type till I felt bored. I used to love DILR. So some days I used to solve maybe like let's say three to five sets and if the sets were very difficult, I used to feel bogged down. I'll be like, okay, I am not going to do more questions today. But if the sets were easier or the topic was very interesting, I was actually enjoying solving the questions. I would even go up to solving 10 sets a day. But as I said, I picked only two sections a day at max on a particular day. Slowly and gradually, I developed the ability to take the three of them together. If you use this technique, I can assure you going from now till the end of July or August, you will be done with your entire syllabus. For now, you can certainly skip geometry as a chapter if it bothers you a lot, or you can probably skip number system for now as well. You can take up both of them in the month of July and you'll still be able to manage. But I would highly recommend you to set a weekly limit for yourself and not a daily limit. Weekly limit will actually make sure that you are more accountable. Like every week at the end of the week, you'll be like, okay, I set a realistic target for myself and I was able to achieve it. At the same time, I did not hurt myself every single day thinking that I'm not able to finish the syllabus. I still have to study. On some days, if you're a working professional, you will not feel like studying. Similarly, if you're a fresher, there might be exams going on. There might be a lot of other things going on. Don't bother yourself so much. At the same time, set a weekly target, which is realistic and which you also feel like achieving at the end of the day. So this is about the daily routine. If you have more questions, feel free to put them in the comments so that I can take them up in the coming videos. Thanks a lot for watching and good luck to you.